Hello everyone, welcome to the session. Now today we are just going to start a lecture on gravitation. Actually, we'll focus on gravitational field, gravitational potential, its potential energy, the escape velocity, and the orbital velocity. So at first, like the electric field or the magnetic field, what do you mean by the gravitational field? Now I'm just relating some of the concepts of electric field or the magnetic field. What do you mean by electric field? That means in uh, space there exists a charge and surround the charge there is a particular region where if you place any other charge it will feel a force of attraction or repulsion. Right? In the case of magnetic field as well if you are having a magnet so surrounding that magnet there is a particular region in that region if you place another magnetic substance so it will be attracted. Right? So in the case of gravitational field also what we know that every object in our universe attracts every other object. So we can say that that whenever the object is placed at a particular distance, suppose there is an object, okay, it is having a mass of m. So you are placing another object that is having a mass of small m and when they are placed at a particular distance of r, then only the force of gravitation is working on that, right? So, we can say that the force experienced by unit mass, whatever the mass you are placing in that gravitational field, we are assuming that this is the gravitational field of the mass m, that means of this mass, right? In the gravitational field, you are placing that mass of small m, so that's why it is experiencing some force of gravitation, right? So the force experienced by unit mass which is placed in a gravitational field is called the gravitational field strength or you can say it is the intensity of a gravitational field of that point. That means at this point if you place any other object which is having a mass of m1 it will also experience the same attractive force. Suppose at this point you are just placing an object of mass m2. So with respect to its distance, it will obviously experience another force of attraction. That is obviously the force of gravitation. So when you are placing an object in gravitational field, then only it is experiencing some force. So force experienced by the object per unit mass, this is the gravitational field intensity or you can say intensity of this gravitational field. Okay. So this is equals to what? This is equals to the force that is having the value of g into capital M small m divided by of r square divided by the small m. They are just getting eliminated and we are getting g into capital M by of r square. This is the value of gravitational field strength. Okay. This gravitational field is actually a vector quantity because it is having some magnitude as well as it is having the direction as well. Now we are just going to discuss what is about the gravitational potential, right? Gravitational potential. Now before discussing that one, we have to understand what do you mean by potential. Potential that means the ability to do some work, right? At a point if you see that the electric potential or the magnetic potential, right? Now in that case what we learned that it is about that if you place any of the object at this point, now you have to do some work to bring that object at this point. Suppose you are located at Assam, okay, and you just want to come at Martam. So in that case, you have to do some work now to reach at this point. So potential of a point, that means how much work you have to do to reach that point. Now gravitational potential means what? Suppose we are taking one example that there is an object which is having a mass of m and this is the gravitational field of that object. In that gravitational field I will substitute or I will bring a mass from infinity. Suppose there is a mass of m who is placed at infinity from the beginning. Now what I will do I will apply some force on this mass and it will be brought to the gravitational field. So after applying of the force, it is able to cover some distance. So obviously it has done some work. In this case, the distance traveled by the object that is equals to dr. When the object is being placed in the gravitational field, that means at this point. Now the separated distance between the two objects that is equals to r. 
okay so when the object is placed in the gravitational field it will experience some force na the same force i had applied on that object to bring that object in the gravitational field the same force will be experienced by that okay so in that case we are assuming that one that distance moved by that object from infinity into that of gravitational field that is equals to dr dr is not a very large distance dr is a very infinitely small distance okay so in that case whatever the work done by the object that is equals to dw it is equals to the force applied on that multiplied by the distance traveled now let me tell you one thing in your book the derivation is wrong so please don't follow that okay there is some mistake i hope it will be some of printing mistake they have done now uh, what is the expression for force that means the force of gravitation that is for these two masses between the capital m and the small m when they are separated by distance of r the force of gravitation that is of g into capital m small m divided by of r square multiplied by of dr and dw will be placed over here now if we just integrate on both of the sides then i will take the limits as well in the left hand side the limit will be from 0 to w in the right hand side the limit will be from infinity to that of distance r because initially the object was at infinity na and now i am applying some force and i just bound him to be placed in the gravitational field so i am bringing the object from infinity to a distance of r to a separated distance of r okay so for that you have to find out the work done integration of dw that is equals to w and the limits will be unchanged the process is known as definite integral you will learn in class 12 in this case g into m these are the constants in a particular integration there is an operator in an operator what the variable is used only that we have to consider so it is a limit having from infinity to that of r and i will write down dr by of r square now there is an integration formula that is of integration of x to the power n dx that is equals to x to the power n plus 1 divided by of m plus 1 okay we will use that formula but one of your childhood things will be required here that is of 1 by x square that means what x to the power minus 2 so 1 by r square means what r to the power minus 2 there is 1 by r square term is there na so in the next step r square will be put in numerator now in the next line what i will do i am not changing anything in the left hand side in the right hand side g and m both are same and this is having the limits from infinity to r now that r square i am just putting in the numerator it will be r to the power minus 2 dr now which formula i have to use integration of x to the power n dx that is equals to x to the power n plus 1 divided by m plus 1 now in this case if i apply that one what the answer i will get r to the power minus 2 plus 1 divided by minus 2 plus 1 the limits will be from infinity to r and this is equals to g into m multiplied by here r to the power minus 1 divided by of minus 1 that is of minus 1 by r and the limits will be from infinity to r now if i substitute the upper limit at first what the thing i am just getting because in a definite integral the upper limit has to be substituted at first okay sorry in the previous case there was a small m that was missing please write down that small m as well so here the small m was missing please write it down because it is also a constant okay now i am just substituting the upper limit at first it is of minus 1 by r then give a minus sign then substitute the lower limit it will be of minus 1 by infinity okay so i am just getting the answer as 1 by infinity is equals to 0 the final answer i am getting that is minus of g into capital m small m divided by of r and in the left hand side just substitute the upper limit it will be w so the work done in bringing that object from infinity into that of gravitational field it is having the value of minus g into capital m small m divided by of r now there is a very important relation between the work done and the potential gravitational potential every potential is denoted by v okay and the work done that is equals to the 
gravitational potential multiplied by the mass. So, if you can say the gravitational potential equals to work done by mass. In this case, the work done is having the value of minus of g into capital M small m divided by r. So, in this case, I am dividing the whole expression with that of m. So, what the expression I am getting that is minus of g into m by of r. In your book, that thing is missing. Um, missing. As uh, in the case of work done, they have substituted the formula of gravitational field intensity or gravitational field strength. That is wrong. That's why. Okay, now the electric, uh, sorry, now the gravitational potential we have that is of minus g into m by of r. Now we are just going to find out the gravitational potential on earth. So what the expression it have? Let's suppose uh, this is the earth surface, right? This is the center of our earth. Now I have just placed one object over here, which is having the mass of m. This is the radius of earth that is of r of e and the mass of our earth that is of m of e. Okay, I'm just using the same notation as your book. Now, in that case, what the expression of force that is experienced by this mass of m because it is uh, placed on the earth surface and it is at a separated distance of that is equals to the radius of our earth. So in this case the force of gravitation that is of g into capital m that is of m of e multiplied by small m divided by r of e square. But in the previous case the expression for gravitational potential you have obtained that is a v equals to minus of g into m by of small r. Now that expression is to be changed here and it can be written as minus of g into capital M of e divided by the radius of earth over here. Because the separated distance in the previous case was small r, in this case the separated distance is equals to the radius of our earth. And the mass in the previous case was only capital M and in this case the, the mass of earth we are considering. Okay, now in this expression, we are going to make a small change. What the change I'm just going to make that is uh, the, the expression of small g that is for gravitational acceleration. You had uh, that is of g into m of e divided by of r of e square. Now, if we just cross multiply here, that is of g into m of e, it is equals to g into r of e square. Now, if I just substitute that value. In that expression, I will get minus of g into r of e square divided by r of e. Sorry, it is only r of e. Now here, I will do some small calculation. Then one of the r of e got cancelled out and I am getting the gravitational potential as minus of g into r of e. Where g is the gravitational acceleration and r of e is the radius of our earth. Okay, now if that question asks that find out the gravitational potential on earth, then you have to explain them in that way. Now, we are just doing another thing that is of the gravitational potential energy. To derive the value of gravitational potential energy, you can use the same expression for work done. I'm just moving in the previous case. Now, what the expression of work done you have obtained? That is of minus of g into capital M small m divided by of r and this is the same expression for gravitational potential energy and it is defined by u. Okay, u is defined as the gravitational potential energy. Now whenever they will ask that find out the gravitational potential energy on earth surface. Now just change this expression uh, in the form that is of minus of g into m of e multiplied by small m divided by the radius of our earth. In this way, this expression can be changed. Now we are just going to learn a new thing that is of escape velocity. Right? What is escape velocity? Escape, the word escape and the word velocity. That means you are just, uh, an object is moving with some huge velocity and it is escaping something. So, suppose in my childhood what I did, suppose I was just throwing some object, suppose a stone in the upward direction and I just thought that if that happens, that the stone that is out of the earth, because I was a child at that time, um, I was at the age of 4 to 5, 
most probably. Okay, so at that time you are just throwing an object and a thing that if that happens that the object can be out of the gravitational field of our earth, then what will happen? At that time I just didn't know the concept of gravitational field obviously, but I am just explaining that concept. So actually it happens, that means whenever the rockets are proposed, whenever the satellites are placed at the orbits, then in that case they are projected in such a way that they are just escaping the gravitational field of our earth okay so suppose this is our earth and surrounding the earth there is a gravitational field so there is a rocket you are just uh, projecting the rocket in the upward direction so it at which velocity you should project that rocket so it can escape the gravitational field of our earth because due to the application of gravitational field it, what will happen that our earth will try to attract each and every object towards the center of our earth okay so it's very hard to escape the gravitational field so that's why you need a very huge velocity right so in that case if the object is placed on the earth's surface then in that case if you are just bringing any of the object from infinity into the gravitational field or you are just uh, doing the reverse thing that means the object was in already the gravitational field of our earth and it is just going to infinity that means out of the gravitational field of our earth right so in that case the expression for u that is i'm just writing down two expression the first expression that means one object was initially at infinity you are applying some force and you are doing some work to bring that object in the gravitational field so in that case you are having the work done or you are having the potential that is of minus g into m of e multiplied by small m divided by r of e right but if the reverse thing happens that means the object was already in the gravitational field and you are applying some force and you are projecting that object in such a way with a huge velocity that it reaches out of the gravitational field that means it can reach to the infinity so obviously the expression which is having the negative sign it will be positive and the same magnitude i will get right so this will be the potential energy of that or you can say this is the escape energy as well so that energy you can obtain and that is equals to the kinetic energy of that object right so we can write down one expression that is of g into m of e multiplied by of m divided by r of e that is equals to how much half of m v of e square what is v of e that is the escape velocity so obviously you should have some kinetic energy na? so that you can escape the gravitational field of our earth so in that case i'm just eliminating the mass m okay and v of e square that is having the value of 2 into g of m of e divided by r of e right so v of e square is having the value so we can see in the next page that is of v of e is having the value of root over of 2 into g into m of e divided by r of e now in that case you should use that same expression that the expression for gravitational acceleration that is g into m of e divided by r of e square right so if you just cross multiply then g of m into m of e that is of small g into r of e square so that is equals to if i just substitute that value that is twice of at the place of g into m of e what i have to substitute i have to substitute the value of g into r of e square so g into r of e square divided by r of e so one of the r of e is eliminated and i am getting the expression of 2 g r of e now in that case if i just substitute the value of gravitational acceleration and the radius of our earth then it will be how much that is of 2 into 9.8 multiplied by 6.3 into 10 to the power of 6 then in that case uh, you are just getting some value approximately 11.2 kilometer per second so every rocket or whatever the object that want to escape the gravitational field of our earth it must be projected with a velocity with a minimum velocity of 11,200 meter per second or 11.2 kilometer per second now we are just going to find out the orbital speed and you can say the period of revolution of the satellite also 
only the orbital speed actually asks sometimes they ask the question they find out the orbital speed for a particular satellite so suppose you are having a satellite and you are just going to place the satellite in the gravitational field of our earth you are not going to escape the gravitational field you want to live in the gravitational field but in a particular orbit surrounded by the earth so suppose you have projected one of the satellite and it is placed at this point and it is just orbiting with some velocity in this direction that means the satellite is in circular motion so in circular motion the speed is constant but the direction is every time changing so you can say it is in uniform acceleration so when as the object is in uniform acceleration so there must be some reason na, why the object is in uniform acceleration there must be some force which is acting on that object in the inward direction now when an object is moving in a circular path so what the force is acting in towards the center that means i need a center seeking force that center seeking force is known as a centripetal force in this case the centripetal force is actually having the value of mv square by of r this is the value of the centripetal force right but we know that uh, whenever the object or whenever the satellite is being placed in the orbit uh, that is uh, due to the gravitational field of our earth right the satellite is able to rotate around the earth due to the gravitational field our earth is applying some force of attraction on the on the satellite so that's why it is able to rotate in a uniform motion so in that case you can say that the value of the centripetal force is equals to the value of the force applied on this satellite whatever the force that is applied on that that is the force of gravitation it's a attractive force in nature that is having the value of g into capital uh, capital m of e multiplied by small m divided by of r square in this case why i have just written down uh, i've just written a small r square because in this case the radius uh, in this case the distance of the satellite from the center of our earth that is equals to small r we have just assumed now in uh, newton's laws of motion or suppose in motion into dimension you have learned about the expression of centripetal force right so initially i had just written that with the concept of mv square by r r is the distance between the satellite and the center of our earth so whenever i am just applying that rule that means the force of gravitational expression as well in that case also i am just assuming the distance between the two objects as smaller so in this case the v i am just writing down it is a v not v not means the orbital velocity i want to find out in this case one of the r is getting cancelled out and the m is also getting cancelled out i am just getting the expression of v not square it is of g into m of e divided by of r so v not is having the value of root over of g into m of e divided by of r now you should remember the same expression that is for gravitational acceleration we have a value that is of g into m of e divided by r of e square right so if we just cross multiply g into m of e is equals to g into r of e square so it is having the expression that is of g into r of e square divided by the value of this r right divided by this value of r so this expression is actually used to find out the orbital velocity of the satellites okay now if we just want to find out the time period or the period of revolution of the satellite then in that case you should assume that the distance of r it can be written as that means this portion is the radius of our earth right we know that that at this portion this small portion is the radius of our earth and the rest of the part we can say this is the height of h so the small r it can be written as r of e plus of h so we can modify this expression and it will be of g into m of e divided by r of e plus of h right so in that case we're just going to substitute some value that uh, small g is having the value of g into m of e divided by r of e square if we just cross multiply it will be of g into m of e it is equals to small g into r of e square so if i just going to substitute that value what the expression i will get it is of g into r of e square 
divided by r of e plus of h so that is of r of e will be outside of that root and it will be of g divided by of r of e plus of h right now in that case whatever the expression you have just got in this case if that happens that the height that means at uh, which height the satellite is being placed the height is uh, very very small with respect to the radius of our earth right that means i just want to tell you that if h is a very very less than of this uh, radius of our earth then in that case whatever the expression we had that is of v not equals to we had the expression of r of e multiplied by g divided by of r of e plus of h now in that case that you can neglect the part of this h so the whatever the expression you will get that is of root over of g into r of e only so if you just substitute the value of this r of e and the g in this expression then what the orbital velocity you will get that is of 9.8 multiplied by 6.3 into 10 to the power of 6 then if you just do this calculation you will get approximately 7.9 kilometer per second so this is the orbital velocity for a particular satellite right now how this uh, now if there is a question that how you have changed like that so if the h is uh, negligible then obviously r of e root over of g divided by of r of e now if that one of the r of e is getting cancelled out so we are getting like that so that's why i'm just able to write down it is of root over g into r of e after substituting the value we have the orbital velocity as 7.9 kilometer per second or 7900 meter per second okay now to get the time period what the expression we have to do sorry what the expression we have to use that is the time period t equals to now the object or the satellite which is rotating in a circular path for a circular path what is the circumference that is of 2 pi r right if i just draw the diagram again this is the earth this is the gravitational field of our earth or you can say the orbit at which the satellite is being placed the distance of the satellite from the center of our earth that is equals to small r so that's why i have just written the circumference of the path that is of 2 pi multiplied by small r divided by the orbital velocity that is of v naught now if i just substitute that value that is equals to 2 pi multiplied by what is the expression of r for that we have just broke it down r can be written as this portion is the radius this portion is the height so small r can be written as radius of our earth plus of height so that is of radius of our earth plus of height divided by what is the value of v naught we are just going to substitute now that is of root over of g into m of e divided by of r of e plus of h right so that is the expression in that case you can simplify that one now it can be written as 2 pi now this r of e root over of r of e plus of h that will go in the numerator and it will be r of e plus of h multiplied by root over of r of e plus of h and here only the root over of g into m of e will be there now at the place of g into m of e if i substitute the value as a g into r of e square now what the expression i will get that is of 2 pi this r of e plus of h this will have the power as 3 by 2 as this is the power of 1 and it is the power of half so in that place i am just substituting the expression as g into r of e square right so that expression that complex expression you can get now this is the final expression to get the time period of the revolution of the satellite okay any of the expression you can use it is better to use that expression or the last one okay it can be further modified as um, the mass can be written as a volume multiplied by of density in that way it can be modified also okay so at this point of time we have just finished the chapter of gravitation nothing else is important more okay you just have to practice the numerical questions and all so thank you so much and please tell me that which part is understandable which part you have the problem if you want to solve some more questions or if you have any doubt you can ask me. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye.